Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Enter your next domain name registration by using the coupon code CHRIS when you check out. This is Chris. Hey, how you doing, Chris? I'm doing well. Who am I speaking with? Uh, my name is Justin. I'm in Southern California here. All right. I'm actually a new viewer to your show and on YouTube. and really interested in all this new tech stuff, and I really like your sense of humor and stuff. I just have a question for you. Sure. Um, I'm actually recently studying on open source and closed source right now in school, and I was wondering on, I've emailed you a couple times, I was wondering if you can, I know it's probably, you've heard it so many times, you've talked about it so many times, but if you can maybe give me a general outline on the pros and cons of open and closed source, and maybe what the benefits on both are, and what the negatives on both are. Well, you know, anything I say is not definitive. Um, as a user, I appreciate either closed or open source in a general capacity. It's ultimately what the software can deliver. Or, you know, if you're using open source as a general term, anything, you know, that's kind of built in an open way can benefit the world. Uh, yeah. You know, so from a code perspective, there are some developers who say, no, I want complete control over my code. I don't want anybody looking in. I know exactly what I'm doing. I want to control development of it because I'm good and good enough. And these are the products. Boom. Done. That's yeah. the closed source route, typically. Open source is more like, well, I got an idea, and here's how I want to do it. And then someone else comes in and says, well, we can do it this way. And another person comes in and says, well, we can try it this. And, and then pretty soon before you know it, you've got you know something that, that works. And that uh, you know people have contributed. Stuck with something that's all right. Can't be fixed. Right. So that's the thing. You know, if something in the closed source realm, you know, changes, or let's say the lead developer dies, and you know, with him or her, so does the intellectual property, just disappears. Pretty yeah. soon, you you don't have anything. You've got something that's dead for all intents and Your purposes. Legacy is pretty much so, gone. Software is living. And, and, and that's something that, that you know people really, I wish, would understand. It's not something that exists in the here and now. It's omnipresent. You're only as good as your latest version. And software is in a perpetual state of evolution. It's living. And there's merits to both closed and open. In a closed environment, you, you can control everything. Uh, you've got intellectual property tied into it. You've got security to a certain degree, which isn't to say that closed source is secure. I mean, we've seen exploits yeah. in a closed ecosystems as well as an open ecosystem. It's just yeah. so it's yeah. it's not an issue of security. So you know, you think the main idea behind closed source is making money? No, because op open source projects can make money too. You know, I, you can make money with WordPress. You can make money with, uh, you know, any open source software in, in terms of service or development. You know, I've, yeah. I've, I'm constantly, constantly on the lookout for rock star developers. Rock star developers. Uh, you know, not just in the closed realm, but in the open realm as well. I'm a big WordPress fan. I, I've long believed that I could be doing just tremendous thing if it, things if I had a pocket of WordPress developers and designers at my disposal. I don't necessarily have the funds for it, and that's the beauty of open source, is you can kind of rely on the community and everybody can, you know, put into something if, as long as they know what they're getting out of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and as I said, I am a, a huge open source advocate, absolutely. That's but, one of the main reasons why I've been listening to you, so. Well, it's, it, it's it, really it, interesting on hearing your reviews, and I love the sense of humor that you bring the technology and stuff. That's one of the main reasons why I've been watching you. Well, no, I so appreciate it. the primitive, you know, MIT text speaking on open and closed source. I could just go on and on for all the speeches I've heard, but listening to you is a lot different. And I really appreciate what you've been putting into technology and what. Well, you know, uh, it's it's kind of, what's well, because here's the thing. I don't. Well, I do get paid to do what I do, but not directly. I get paid indirectly. You know, this isn't my job so much. This isn't my career so much. It's just me. So everything you hear, yes, it's my opinion. And, I, you know, I, as, as Dennis Miller says, you know, it's my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, but you're going to find a lot of opinions from practical experience in the field to be different than academic opinions. 
You know, it, yep. it, it, and, and I would say that if you're going to go one route or the other, number one, you don't. Uh, number two, they're not mutually exclusive in every sense. There are, in the closed, in, Twitter is quote, quote unquote closed source, but it has APIs. Yeah. The iPhone is closed source, or the iPhone OS, closed source, but it has APIs for developers to plug into. You can play along in a closed environment using your code, which you can choose to open source or not. So there, there's just a difference in philosophies. And I think, let me give you another example. I've got a text editor on Mac OS X uh, that I love called Smoltron. And it's open source. The developer decided he didn't want to do anything with it anymore. So another developer took the code and has been continuing the development of this text editor that I loved. Call, now it's called Phrase or Phrase. I don't know how you say it out loud. I only read it on the screen. But essentially, this app that I love could have died. It could have just disappeared, just mitigated, wow. like by you know further development. It was I mean, of other applications. But the fact that the author dealt it in an open source capacity, and another person who said, "Dude, this is awesome. I've got to take the ball and I got to run with it because I can do the job better." Now, if you but it also comes into play the idea of licensing because there are certainly different types of open licenses out there uh you can choose what works you know better for you in a business model you can choose yep. what works for you better in, in a, a you know a, a code model hell you can decide to open source just parts of your platform or parts of your program and keep the rest of it yeah. closed here is where and i'm going to kind of take a slightly different direction here uh -huh. this is where i believe the world has gone awry and where I believe closed source doesn't work in government yeah. voting machines are closed source and that is yeah. wrong that is fundamentally wrong with actual physical votes and ballots we can count them there's trackability with a closed system you can't do that no accountability constitutionally wrong <laughs> it's it's just as easy to flip a bit and that's not to say that if it was open source it'd be less secure because it may very well be but at least we can look at least there's fact checking and when we're talking about a republic if we're talking about our rights Specifically, as U.S. citizens or in any democratic society where we have the right to vote, it Open. is imperative <laughs> that these procedures happen in an open, trackable, accountable capacity. Uh, and that has nothing All to do with business. I just think it's wrong. I think it is just wrong. I don't trust closed systems with that type of, oh. uh, of experience. With, yeah. with that as my right as a U.S. citizen to entrust a private institution. I don't trust private institutions. I don't trust closed institutions as much as I need to. I mean, do I trust Apple for what they provide? Eh, nothing's broken here that I know of. They're not taking my information and you know spreading it throughout the galaxy. I don't know what the, the voting machines are doing with the, the, the votes that I'm passing along. How do I know that they're not miscounting them? Uh, bugs exist in software. And without any kind of accountability, it, people should be frightened. Absolutely frightened. Any Absolutely. private institution any private institution that interfaces with government or any kind of national policies needs to be open and accountable for the data that they're managing. That goes on down the line. All the way through, not to put my tinfoil hat on, but all the way through to the Fed. Now, I'm not talking about the federal government. 
mind you. The Federal Reserve oh. is a private institution with zero accountability. Look into the Federal Reserve Act. Just, just, these closed policies are, make me extremely nervous. And when we introduce technology that's closed to an already uh, convoluted, uh, unaccountable system that our entire existence, as far as citizens of a country, depends on, we are, we're walking into dangerous territory. So, closed software does have a place. Open software does have a place. But, there's benefits and drawbacks to either one of them. I would just be careful when you, when you place anything of yourself, of your mind, into uh, the, the hands of something that's uh, closed. Yep. You're at their mercy at that point. You're at their mercy. And, you know, for playing solitaire, who cares? I'm not talking about that kind of stuff. You know, you're talking about how everybody's connected to all these social sites and putting all your information, trusting and accepting their license act agreements. Just being careful, so man. You're, you're just putting your information into huge silos that you don't know where it's going. Big you time. Don't know what's doing. It's, you know, that's exactly true. You know, I, I've long believed that model. I've warned people. I'm like, you know, dude, you're dealing with Twitter's terms of service or Facebook's terms of service or YouTube's terms of service. That's not your data. It, officially, it's theirs. And what you find in license agreements are what you find at the page three of your license agreement to Facebook, Facebook and stuff. They're, they're, they're having fun, and, and they can do whatever the hell they want. And and that's fine. You know, I, I'm not saying that I'm going to get offline. I mean, yeah, I, I have to agree with the way that they do business. And if I don't, I can take my business elsewhere or hope that other people will or that ultimately they will cave uh, or crumble uh, through their draconian uh, policies. DRM is going down the same route. You want to talk about closed source, DRM wouldn't make me as nervous if it was open. Of course, DRM would not functionally likely exist because it's all built on intellectual property and encoding you know, these uh, strategies uh, you know, in and around media so that it, it, it's restricted on a certain licensing that the content producer uh, wishes to impose. DRM doesn't get in my way because I play by the rules. DRM gets yeah. in the way when you're doing something, and the rules are whatever the content producer wants to have happen. Uh, it's when you're doing something that the content or any kind of producer wa doesn't want to have happen. That's when uh, there's a there's an issue. Um, yeah. But you know, I, I do believe this world could stand to see a lot more open projects, uh, and, and I do believe it could be served just as equally as well. Uh, with closed projects, I think there's a there's a good balance. But I do believe, though, that all that being said, if there's a future, it's likely in the open realm, not the closed. Likely in the open realm. Not to say that Android's going to ever overtake the iPhone OS. If I'm not going to say that. What I am going to say is that, and I I predicted this, and I was right. I said it was a, a few months ago. I predicted that we would see Android, the operating system, running in a car uh, within a year, and I, or certainly, you know, quick as soon. And I was right. There was a car that has, uh, it's certainly, uh, if, it's, if it's not uh, coming out this year or next, that's going to be running the Android OS in the nav system, in the, uh, the dashboard. Android, you know, is likely to be running in a lot of cars. That's open. Or it's, it's certainly yeah. the platform's open source. Uh, Apple's not likely going to go that route. I doubt we're going to see an Apple iX-powered car at any point in the near future. Uh, yeah, I don't I think Apple understand. wants to go down that route. They might, you know, if it becomes economically viable, sure, but I think Google's Android would be better positioned for that. Um, it, it's, yep. it, it's, right on, it, it makes more sense to, to go that awesome. route, and if anything, yep. Google's Android is going to mitigate the uh, experience or the value in the marketplace of something like the future Windows Mobile OS more than the iPhone, and the iPhone's yeah. closed. So it's 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 what the market wants to decide, really, what users decide, and and you know what makes economic sense for you know people who are you know playing inside these ecosystems.
It's, yep. it's, it's interesting. I, I love the conversation. I like talking about this stuff. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I've emailed you a couple times. You just, I know you're really busy with everything. You haven't been able to get it back. But, hey, man, I really appreciate your insight. And, you know, uh, I'm into thin air on your chat there live. Cool. I really appreciate Bridget and Jeff and all them's help and Uncle, Uncle John and all them. So, uh, well, they appreciate that. Uh, appreciate your uh, tech that who sure. was helping me the other day. I think Yeah, I think it was Bridget with my antivirus software this morning. Cool. So, Which one are you using? Appreciate all the help, man. And uh, I want to say I love your quote. Uh, my my benefits will be on, well, what, they, what did you say? My benefits will be around when I'm long gone. Yes. Right on, man. All right. Thanks again. Take it easy, Chris. You too.